Hey guys, welcome to the second video of the Wattman Terra Thin Client Computer for Retro Gaming. Thank you to Electromind for sending us this unit. All the purchase links are down below in the description, including a 20% discount coupon. So the idea of this video is now to look at Windows XP and also Windows 98. Be sure to watch the previous DOS video. It might touch on a few things that I'm going to leave out for this video. So there's a ton of stuff uh, that we're going to cover in this video, upgrading the video card, comparing the integrated video card with the upgraded video cards, the power supply, power consumption, compact flash cards, upgrading the RAM, the specifications and so on. So lots of interesting stuff. So at the end of the video, you should have um, a much better idea of what this unit can do. And if this is something uh, for you for your retro needs. So this is the configuration of the machine how I got it. We got the computer. There was a 256 megabyte CF card. There was a 1 gigabyte uh, RAM module but the configuration of your machine might be different but look RAM is cheap so it's really easy to upgrade and the power brick which we will take a closer look. So I got quite a few comments about the power supply. So this is an excellent power supply. On one end it's got one of these standard uh, connectors and on the other end your standard PC 3 pin connector so yes you don't have to uh, get a travel adapter or something like that also um, I had a question about this in the US will it work uh, on 110 or whatever voltage is being used over there yes it will so it goes from 100 to 240 volts and the output is 12 volt so it comes uh, 12 volt come out of here and up to 5 amps. Now in terms of how much power does this unit consume, I have a power meter and I did some readings. Let me just quickly look it up. So sitting idle, that's under Windows XP with no upgrades, just the internal video card and everything. Uh, sitting idle on the desktop, 13 watts, running 3D Mark between 16 and 17 watts and then with the upgraded video card we're going to use uh, one of these, a GeForce 6200. With this video card the power consumption did double to roughly around 30 watts. I got a couple of comments about using parallel port sound devices and absolutely this is a proper parallel port, make sure it's enabled in the BIOS and then you can use any parallel port device, be it a sound card or anything else. So today we're going to look at Windows XP and Windows 98 and I'm using exclusively compact flash cards. This is a very fast one, it's a 32 gigabyte from Lexa and it does up to 160 gigabytes per second and you will see um, later in the video the performance is outstanding. For Windows 98 I used an old 4 gigabyte CF card but this one turned out to be quite slow so you definitely want to use a decent CF card. So using a compact flash card for Windows XP is probably not the best idea, but for me, for testing the machine, it was sufficient. So what would I recommend? I like the idea of using one of these IDE ports here. So you need an adapter that goes from a 44 pin IDE to something like a, a mini SATA SSD. And those items are readily available on the market, um, be it the adapters themselves or the small SSDs. In terms of size, the unit is 25 centimeters wide. It is just under six centimeters tall, and it's just under 22 centimeters deep. And it's also nice and light. The data sheet says 1.6 kilos, so roughly three pounds. I got a question about the USB flash drive that I used in the previous DOS video. Yes, the USB flash drive basically becomes your C drive, your hard drive. So this machine supports installing operating systems onto a USB flash drive and then booting from it. Also worth noting is on the side of the machine is a sticker with a license key for Windows Embedded CE version 6.0. Now usually I'm pretty good with finding information online but this machine proved to be quite difficult. I did find a datasheet and it does mention some interesting upgrade options. For example, there was available a Visa mounting kit, a, U, um, a USB wireless kit for uh, Wi-Fi, a smart card reader, there was also an ID and a SATA hard drive kit and of course the PCI riser card. If you have come across one of those or even if you've seen a photo, uh, do link it down below in the comments. I, I, I'd just love to see what that looks like, looks like especially the hard drive mounting kits. Um, does the hard drive mount uh, onto the cover because it's got some screws here that would be interesting to know or is it just is it, is it just something that you plug onto here yeah so if you got any information uh, whatever kind of information that is please leave it down below in the comments 
The onboard S3 video card does support full HD and we can go all the way to 1920 by 1440. I did, however, had to uh, tick a tick box here, this one, uh, untick the hard modes that this monitor cannot display. So I had to untick this one for full HD resolution to become available. Because the font uh, is quite small, I'm going to switch down to uh, 720p. That should make uh, things a little bit easier to uh, read on the screen. The S3 driver is pretty much bare bone. There's not much going on. Here we can uh, turn off the VGA output, which I've done. We can uh, control some things with the uh, brightness, gamma, contrast, and so on. Let me see if there's a button to uh, reset everything. There you go. Uh, there's some information here about the uh, video card and that overlay, there's an overlay function as well. Now, there's nothing that lets us uh, tune game settings. So I had a look in PowerStrip. That usually lets me disable VSync. But if we try that, so if we untick the enable VSync for OpenGL and we tick disable VSync for Dark 3D and we apply, we just get a notification sound and the settings don't apply. So all the benchmarks. Uh, apart from 3D Mark, all the other game benchmarks, uh, VSync is enabled, so just keep that in mind when we're going to look at the performance. In general, I would say that the Windows XP experience is surprisingly snappy. Um, just opening Windows and everything, it doesn't take too long. It's nice and uh, responsive, nice and snappy. Now, I'm using a, a pretty decent compact flash card, so that certainly helps. Um, very quick access time. So yeah, I was positively surprised. I expected the XP performance to be a lot worse, to be honest. And we will have a look at the graphics performance shortly. So let's have a closer look at the specifications and the hardware and software. So I'm doing a few things at the same time here. In Everest, we can see we're running Windows XP with Service Pack 3. The processor shows up as unknown, but it should uh, pop up in CPU set in a moment. Here we go. So it's via Eden running at uh, 1.2 gigahertz. Um, and yeah, we've got a nice little logo here. There's some information about the motherboard, the chipset, it's a CN700 from Via, and the onboard graphics is connected with an HEP 8X interface. For the RAM, one gigabyte is the maximum, so I put in a one gig uh, stick into the machine. And uh, here are the memory timings and everything. What else do we have? Let's have a look here. That chipset, that is incorrect. It's the uh, VN700. So uh, Everest has a bit of a hard time identifying the components. It got the video card right, the Unicron Pro uh, from Vire. We've got a sound adapter here, but there's some more information um, if we click here. So this is a Vire. Um, sound chip, the VT1612A. Uh, also, all the drivers are available on the um, website from VIA. Here we have the storage controllers. This is the compact flash card um, that I'm using. What else is going on here? The network adapter is not from VIA. This is one from Realtek. I got the drivers directly from the Realtek website. And we have USB uh, to as well. So copying um, stuff on, from an external hard drive is nice and fast. I'm using a compact flash card, 32 gigabyte, nice and fast. The problem is this gets detected as a removable hard drive. And if we click on my computer, we can see it here. Devices with re removable storage, the C drive, and this is just an external USB hard drive. And there was an issue with the page file. I kept getting an error about the uh, swap swap file, page file, and I eventually just uh, turned it off and that fixed the issue. So for Windows XP, probably using CF cards is not the best option. I would go with something like a 44 pin uh, ID to uh, a mini SATA SSD adapter or something like that. That is probably the better option. Okay, so to get a better idea of what this machine feels like when using, I'm just going to install a Half-Life demo from the external hard drive. I use an external hard drive for my Windows XP uh, and higher projects. For Windows 98, I usually just use a thumb drive uh, with a, a FAT32 partition. So under projects, I have all the projects I uh, work on and here we are. And there should be a demo file somewhere. There you go, Half-Life uplink. So you can see it's nice. Responsive, it doesn't take uh, too long to load. 
So let's quickly install that game. Um, hopefully it'll run. I haven't tested it yet. Uh, Quake 2 and Quake 3 ran just fine and those games use OpenGL so I expect um, the Half-Life demo to work just fine as well. All right, let's have a look. Configuration, video modes. We're gonna to switch to OpenGL. Let's try 800 by 600. And done, done, new game, and let's go. There you go, okay, the Fraps counter is working. Okay, give me a sec, oops. Alrighty, so the game seems to run fine. The OpenGL option didn't work, so I switched to Direct3D. We're running at 800 by 600. And I believe the refresh rate might be 75 Hertz because uh, I can see Fraps telling us 72 FPS. Okay, there you go. So we're getting around 30, 40 FPS. Sorry, but those doors will not open until we send the all clear. So send it already. I did not. So that's nice and smooth, and that's with the onboard graphics. It'll only get better once we check out a PCI video card. Let's have a look at some PCI video cards. I've got a few comments about trying out some uh, Voodoo cards, for example. So I used uh, this card for Windows XP. It's the GeForce 6200. Uh, really good performance and great for Windows XP. So let's have a look if that fits into the machine, just gonna slide it in. So it's a tight fit. Um, there's a little bit of a, an issue here with the CMOS battery. So that just means um, it doesn't fit nice and flat, but it will fit. The PCB will just uh, bend a little bit and it's not an issue. I had no issues using this card in this machine. Now for Windows 98, you could go with something like this. This is a TNT2 M64 in the PCI uh, variant and let's have a look. That card fits perfectly. There are no clearance issues whatsoever. Now someone asked about Voodoo 2. Let's have a look. No, that card is way too long. But the first Voodoo fits nicely. No clearance issues. There's um, room here um, with the CMOS battery. So yeah, now this is a diamond monster just in case you want to compare the sizes. But yeah, if you want to turn this into a little uh, Voodoo 1 retro gaming PC, you can do that. Okay, let's have a look at some benchmarks. So we're going to look at two things. Firstly, we're going to benchmark the onboard S3 Unicron Pro. And then I'm going to install a video card. It's a GeForce 6200. And we're going to see how much of a performance boost we're getting. Do note that the S3 video card has VSync enabled in most games, whereas the, on the GeForce you can turn off VSync in the driver. So first up we got uh, Draken. We're getting around just over 30 FPS at the low resolutions, but then it quickly uh, drops off. The next game we have is Quake 2, also just under 60 FPS. So at 800 by 600 with VSync locked, should be a fairly smooth experience. Um, I couldn't run the 1280 by 960 resolution. Some video cards don't support that resolution in full screen, so it switches to window mode, and then I don't uh, benchmark it because the performance is lower. Uh, Quake 3, also 640 by 480 and 800 by 600, you should get around 60 FPS most of the time, so definitely playable. And we've got another game, an OpenGL game, MDK2, just over 30 FPS, so that should also be nice and playable. And here we have the results in Draken comparing the onboard card with the GeForce 6200. And we can see, especially at the higher resolution, the GeForce is a lot faster. But we can also see the CPU limitation um, at 640x480. The processor is just not fast enough to uh, get more FPS. In Quake 2, look at that difference. 640x480, 171 FPS. Now, very likely, if VSync can be uh, disabled on the onboard video card, it would perform also a lot better. But I had no luck with that. 
And yeah, we can see a nice drop off in, uh, in performance as we crank up the resolution. But Quake 2 on a dedicated GeForce will be nice and smooth in this machine. Uh, Quake 3, we can also see a difference between the two cards. We're getting around 70 FPS uh, thanks to the slower processor. That seems to be where the limit is. But once again, if you install a video card, those games will become nice and playable. And here we have MDK2. Look at that, 82 FPS. We're getting 74 FPS at 1280 by 1024. So that game becomes extremely playable. So here we go, 2073 3D Marks in 3D Mark 2000. This is with the onboard video card. I don't have results for the GeForce for this test, but I do have results for both with 3D Mark 2001 SE. So we're getting 1155 with the onboard video card and almost 4000 with the GeForce. Now just a few tips if you were using a PCI video card. You might not get a display on your PCI video card when you're booting into Windows. So uh, you will see both video cards show up on the display adapter. So what I had to do, I plugged in the monitor onto the onboard uh, S3 video card. Then I installed the video drivers. Then I put it into Windows and then I right clicked on here. I went to properties and you can disable um, the onboard video card through this option. And after I did that, I restarted the machine and then the GeForce was working 100%. Yes, so now it's time to check out Windows 98. Quite interesting. The experience is very similar to the one under Windows XP. I used a older 4 gigabyte compact flash card and I can really tell the difference. Um, it's a lot slower and even Windows 98 being a lot more lightweight than Windows XP, it feels uh, a lot more sluggish. So I can highly recommend get a decent compact flash card for uh, Windows. Here we have all the drivers. So these ones are for the sound card. So yes, we've got working uh, sound just like in uh, Windows XP USB 2.0 drivers. These are the latest chipset drivers. Um, the Visa display drivers, we have to talk about those. Um, these are the S3 graphics drivers. And these are the drivers from Realtek for the onboard uh, Ethernet card. Let's have a look at Device Manager, see what's going on here. So um, and that's the only issue I ran into Windows 98. Uh, the S3 video drivers simply wouldn't work. So the only way I could get uh, half decent display options and we can see what we have here. Uh, we have true color and uh, XGA resolution was by using uh, these uh, Visa drivers. Um, I will put a link down below in the description where you can download those. So the bottom line is for Windows 98 gaming, you will need uh, a PCI video card uh, for 3D gaming. There's just no way around it. Um, I have used a dedicated mini ITX motherboard with that same CPU and video card and it worked fine under Windows 98. The drivers had no issues. So this might just be a bias issue. And look, there's uh, no one's gonna fix the bias. So uh, under Windows 98, if you want a game, use the onboard sound card and we gotta go with a dedicated PCI video card. And there will be a discussion about which video cards you could go for in this video. So here we've got the network card, that's from Realtek. This is the uh, sound chip from Vaya, and everything else is standard stuff. We do have USB 2, which is nice. Makes copying uh, nice and fast. Uh, storage devices. I've got a thumb drive uh, plugged in, just the normal Windows 98 storage driver and everything else is just uh, standard stuff, to be honest. So let's have a look what happens when we actually install the S3 video drivers. The installation works without any issues, so we get the usual splash screen here and everything. So we're just gonna follow the prompts. Uh, it'll proceed to install the video driver, and at some point it'll ask us to reboot the machine. And that is the issue. So the driver just doesn't uh, want to work. And I tried a few other drivers as well, forcing other drivers, but had no luck. Um, if you do find a solution, please uh, leave them down below in the comments. A lot of people uh, are eager to hear about that. So yeah, a bit unfortunate, but it just means you have to use a dedicated PCI graphics card. Not a bad choice anyway. Um, for gaming, you're gonna get a lot better performance. And you've got onboard sound and all the other devices, they work just fine under Windows 98.
I also got a few comments about using a flexible PCI cable instead of the 90 degree riser adapter. I've ordered one from eBay. So this is something I'll uh, find out in around four weeks time. Unfortunately, that's how long it uh, usually takes for something to arrive. I think it's time to summarize this video. So under Windows XP, excellent machine. I was positively surprised by the snappiness and responsiveness, thanks to a fast compact flash card, of course. And for gaming, if you pop in a dedicated GeForce, yeah, it's quite capable. You can play uh, games from 1999, 2000, maybe 2001, quite comfortably on this machine. And if you're not into gaming and you want to use this machine for other purposes, under Windows XP, the onboard graphics worked just fine. The sound, Ethernet, all of that is working. Under Windows 98, it's kind of the same story. It's just that the onboard uh, video card didn't work with the 3D driver, so we had to use a Visa driver, uh, which just means uh, not as good uh, gaming performance. But again, uh, you might not be into gaming, you might want to have a Windows 98 machine for other purposes, and it's perfect for that. So there you have it, guys. What a cute little machine, very flexible. DOS, Windows 98, Windows XP, there are so many different uh, projects and things you can do with this machine. It's very flexible, nice, compact, light, uh, very power efficient. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed working with this machine. It was a ton of work because I, uh, I spent days just using the machine and then um, you still have to do a video. So it's like uh, twice the work. So I'm a little bit worn out, but I think you enjoyed it. I got really good uh, comments and it's definitely a keeper. And you might see this uh, machine being used in the channel uh, again in the future. So as always, if you found the video interesting, be sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, uh, click on that notification bell to get all the updates. And that's it. Thank you for watching. I shall see you soon with another one.